What's up, everyone? On this Will's Week in Whiskey, I'm bringing you the case for unopened bottles. Bourbon culture today is one of many cliches. Get on any Facebook group at any time of the day and you'll see Blanton's jokes. You'll see crotch shots. You'll see crotch shots meant to be mocking other crotch shots. You'll see people saying, am I doing this right? People calling the 10 year and 12 year Van Winkle products pappy. People calling out people calling the 10 year and 12 year Van Winkle products pappy. But there are two cliches that bother me right now more than any of the others. People commenting on photos of other people's bourbon collections saying, open your bottles, or a picture of an opened, rarish bottle saying, look, they do open. I love drinking bourbon. I love the art of it. I love the history of it. I love the pure Americana in the bottle. I love the taste of it. I love getting together with friends with a good bottle of whiskey and making a good memory. That's a major reason the podcast even exists. And I can't enjoy any of those things without opening the bottles. But I think the mass judgment of unopened bottles is misplaced. First, who are we to tell another adult what they should or shouldn't do with something they themselves bought? They worked hard for the money and they spent it on a fine bottle of whiskey. Heaven forbid, they may have even camped out to get that bottle. Who are we to decide when or where or with who they open it or even what they do with it at all? It's their bottle. Leave them alone. Acting like there's some moral superiority of someone who bought a bottle and then compulsively opens it versus someone who doesn't is just asinine. There's an assumption that an unopened bottle of whiskey at time of purchase will remain an unopened bottle of whiskey forever. I'd argue that saving a prized bottle to open with a specific group of friends actually helps create the memory. Waiting for a reunion of college buddies, a big fishing trip, somebody's wedding, uh, even a, a cookout before a big game, all of these things, when the unopened bottle gets popped in that moment with everyone there, it makes sharing that whiskey even more memorable. Bringing along your already opened and quarter drunk bottle of BTAC is still great, but there's something in that ritual of opening the bottle with friends that just can't be replaced. Also, if I have a bottle of something nice and it's opened, I tend to sample it periodically. And typically that's without someone there to share it with me. Well, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I do feel like I'm nickel and diming this bottle by just slowly chipping away at it instead of saving it for something really special or having a specific moment and creating a memory with a friend. At the end of the day, most of the potential of that bottle was underappreciated because it was already open. Third, there is nothing wrong with collecting something. There seems to be this assumption that this is somehow an immoral use of that bourbon. Having it sit on your shelf to admire or as a risky store of value for you or whatever your decision or reason for collecting it is, that's your choice. If that's why you want to keep your bottle of whiskey unopened, that's your prerogative. Don't let anyone else peer pressure you into doing something you don't want to do with it. Fourth, future dusties. Jack Rose Dining Saloon in Washington, D.C., is basically a mecca of bourbon. It has one of the most amazing collections of vintage spirits. You can walk in and literally drink history. I tell the story of the one night I spent at Jack Rose more than any other of my bourbon experience stories. That night, one of the whiskeys I drank was an eight-year-old Dowling Deluxe that was distilled before World War II and bottled after World War II. So it spent its entire aging life inside a barrel while World War II was going on. That bottle had been perfectly preserved. It wasn't oxidized. It was delicious. It had so much character. It's something I'll never forget, and I was drinking history. Jack Rose exists because of two things. A favorable vintage spirits law in Washington, D.C., and people who didn't open their whiskey. There's a lot of joy on stumbling upon uh, a liquor store that has dusty bottles in the back or an estate sale where there's some vintage wild turkey decanters from the 70s that haven't been opened. Or maybe even a friend of a friend whose grandmother found a box that had these old bourbons in them that were never opened and never drunk. Once again, that whiskey only exists because someone didn't impulsively open their bottle when they bought it. And now you get to enjoy it. I look forward to a day when bourbon prices settle down. They aren't insane. We aren't in this boom. Someone's batch two Kentucky Owl 
is going for a reasonable price. But if that person is peer pressured into opening it by some keyboard warrior who they've never met, then those special bottles are gonna go extinct a lot sooner than they could be. At the end of the day, whiskey should be fun. You should enjoy it the way you wanna enjoy it, not the way someone else wants you to enjoy it. There's no right or wrong way either, unless you're the grease. <laughs>